Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Another interesting week in crypto with all nine of the Bitcoin ETFs getting rejected. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what's still on the table. But in terms of the top 100, we see Bitcoin up slightly, which a lot of people would have said there's no way that's possible with all those ETFs getting rejected at once and the market holding up pretty well. As we look down the list, though, a lot of red, apart from a few standouts that we've covered on the channel. So, you know, VeChain, uh, Lisk, huge week for Nano, which I'm going to talk about more, uh, and Walton Chain here back in the top 50. So it's great to see this happening, particularly this video I did over a year ago now, Bitcoin altcoin correlation explained, and all of these having a higher degree of correlation with Bitcoin, but... I said that I think that's going to change in 2018, and there's a few months left, but the fact is it's still all pretty related to Bitcoin, as we know, with Bitcoin down 70%, altcoins down 90%, a lot of them. So when I see good coins with strong fundamentals that we've covered on the channel have those big weeks and start to move independent of the market, that really excites me. So check that video out if you haven't already, and it's something that I'll continue to talk about more in the future. But on this day in history, guys, so last year, Segwit went live on Bitcoin after the Bitcoin Cash hard fork. It took a long time for the wallets and exchanges and those people to implement Segwit. And we've really seen that um, be widely adopted now and fees have remained relatively low compared to how bad they got last year as well. So it's going to continue to be the case with these upgrades and, and soft forks that it takes time for people to implement these features and Bitcoin is treading carefully. You know, you don't want to do the wrong thing. There's billions of dollars at stake and I think sometimes people forget that whether it's Bitcoin or all these coins that the good projects are taking their time to get things right on the first go. In 2016, all Bitfinex users got a 36% haircut or bail-in to cover the losses that happened in the hack. So only Bitcoin was stolen. I logged in. I wasn't one of the affected users. I mainly had Ethereum on that I was trading at the time and accumulating. Uh, Ethereum was around $6 and I, I had a lot on there. And yeah, we got bailed in. So we lost a lot of Ethereum and you know, that wasn't ideal. We got issued these BFX IOU tokens at a one-to-one -one value. Crypto started to go up. The value of these tokens started to go down as people were um, fearful they weren't going to get repaid. So it was a messy situation. Bitfinex did pay everyone back in full in dollar terms, but a lot of people lost out compared to if they had have had um, their crypto not be bailed in and they would have um, benefited from the rise in price. So that's an interesting story. Check that out if you want more details. In 2015, Bitcoin completed an 86% correction this week, all the way down to $166 from 1200 Now, guys, that was painful. Everyone in the space, everyone that was believing, accumulating as Bitcoin had gone sideways to lower in 2014 and 15, they're rewarded now. And it's not exactly the same. History doesn't repeat. It can rhyme. But I just see that so much now in the community, in the professional trading groups versus you know the cowboys that are throwing cash and wanting to get rich quick. They're not interested in accumulating, buying good coins at low prices. Whereas you've got to take a long-term perspective, guys. And perspective really is it everything and those people are now obviously greatly rewarded so we're only down 70 percent at the moment there's a lot of people out there um, including myself that have been through more painful corrections than this guys but i'm going to talk about how long this may last as well because we heard it this week a lot of people saying that you know this correction could go on for uh, months or years and i don't agree with that next up the channel and myself personally, guys, I'm going to use it from time to time to talk about issues that I think are important. So it's great to see the FDA approving magic mushrooms for the treatment of depression. I've spoken about MDMA or ecstasy for use in post-traumatic stress disorder, medical marijuana, guys. Um, I think this is important to talk about, and it's part of the whole movement, the revolution. Um, we don't want the power concentrated in the hands of, of a few. We want to be open-minded. And a few people were pretty negative on this video I did about mental health and saying, you know, what's this crap? I'm here for crypto. So guys, if I do one video out of every 100 or so and the title's pretty clear, if you don't want to watch it, that's up to you. But if, if it really bothers you that much, 
you know, I'm not sure what else I can do, sorry guys, but I will be talking about other topics from time to time, not regularly, but you know, the one video on every 100 when I think something's uh, pretty important, hopefully that's not too much to ask. So this week we were over in Sydney, uh, we met with NEM, I did the non-technical presentation there, I think a lot of people forget that NEM is doing thousands of transactions per second with proof of importance, which is a type of proof of stake. It's doing a lot of the things that you know other blockchains are aiming to do or talking about doing in the future. And I think people just forget that NEM is doing that already. And the competition for the infrastructure blockchain, who's going to have the most businesses built on top of it? Yeah, it's probably one that's um, been hit hard price-wise because they haven't released that catapult upgrade that's um, overdue, but that's certainly coming. It's definitely one to keep an eye on in the mix with EOS, Cardano, or all the other candidates um, that maybe isn't talked about a lot. So keep an eye on them. This meetup with Horizon State, Sharing, Power Ledger, um, Leon from Solara there as well. That was fantastic. Innovation for impact. Again, it's this movement that we're creating of people that are the true believers that are still there. And yes, I did get to have a few beers with Jamie and talk to him about why he had to leave. You know, I think people forget that he's been traveling for, for five years building this project. It's got to this point where they've got big partnerships. The team's, you know, grown to a number of people compared to where this was a little project with a few staff going for the voting and election. you know They've now got so many ag angles moving in corporate directions. It's great for Horizon State. It's great for the token. But Jamie's starting a family. He, he just can't be doing working that startup life and traveling around the world now. Um, hey, HST is in safe hands, guys. Jamie was more the, the face of the company. You know He wasn't running at all. Um, so I've got full faith in the other co-founders, Jamie still owns all of his HST, which is a, obviously a big positive, and so do I, guys. So we wish Jamie all the best, and he'll continue to work in the blockchain space, and we'll probably get him on the channel as well at some point, guys. In other news, that Trinity desktop release for IOTA, a lot of you are asking about what are the best wallets for a number of coins, and again, these are things that need to be developed. So user-friendly interfaces, it's going to help with mass adoption, and IOTA is certainly one where a lot of people have been waiting for a really user-friendly wallet. So hopefully this one uh, in beta is nice and user-friendly for you guys to check out. So we've got some atomic swaps. So from the Ethereum main chain to off-chain, the second layer in Bitcoin here. So we've seen swaps between Litecoin and Bitcoin. Um, Decred and a few others, but this is great to see. And again, software engineers, people forget this needs to be developed. And it's these big chains uh, that have the most devs on them, which continue to lead the way. Um, great to see. And I think sometimes people forget that, yes, these, these big blockchains are also trying to do some pretty um, cutting edge things. And we're often looking at the altcoins that have the big claims in their white papers. And we forget that there's so much going on in improvement proposals for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and so on. So the first article here, last week we spoke about significant selling pressure and there was some mainstream articles saying that you know everyone's selling their uh, ETH, all these ICOs, and it's causing the price to go down. Well, read this article by D2 Capital, which presents the other side of the argument, and it actually says that, no, that's not the case at all. They're not um, selling anywhere near as much um, compared to the regular trading volume and it's not actually a huge factor that's caused the ETH price to go down. Ethereum's gone down just like plenty of other altcoins have guys. It's part of this this cycle. Ethereum's gone down, you know, 70, 80, 90% before in corrections. It's happening again. It's the whole market. Check that article out for more information. This week, the Ethereum core devs got on a meeting uh, to talk about the second half of that hard fork, which we've covered on the channel a number of times now, guys, which is aiming to go ahead in October. So there's a, a few things being talked about here, but the main one is the difficulty bomb. So how many Ethereum are issued with each block? And at the moment, the inflation rate of Ethereum is about 7%, which is higher than what um, they're aiming for and as an investor the lower the inflation the better for us the basics of supply and demand so at the moment leading the vote here um, is the proposal to reduce the issuance of ETH to only one new ETH per block and look to be honest I hope that does go ahead uh, I hope they do delay that difficulty bomb to move to proof of stake 
you do have to look after the community, um, guys. And at the moment, uh, yeah, that inflation rate is a lot higher than um, a lot of coins out there. Continuing to lead the way in terms of development, Amisa Go, named one of the top three cryptocurrencies by um, Stanford Research here. Plasma, I'll continue to talk about it, guys. It's a lot closer than people are thinking and, and potentially billions of transactions per second once we have these blockchains in, in blockchain. So we see uh, the Loom project here launching a Plasma chain, um, three different games here. Check that out as well. Congrats to Loom Network. It's one thing to test and talk about this technology, but to see it get implemented, guys, um, on top of Ethereum, uh, well done to the, the Loom team. So moving on to this next article here, you might have seen this tweet. CNBC is the perfect contrarian indicator with up to 95% accuracy. So whenever they say, take the opposite side of it, and it, it, it's just great to see the mainstream um, get called out on some of the rubbish that they put out. Whether or not they're doing this deliberately, um, trying to take advantage of their audience, or they're just playing wrong because they don't understand this space, who knows? But um, it's good to see them getting called out guys and uh, maybe if they're telling you it's uh, gonna go lower it's maybe a good time to be buying so the next one here Bitcoin cash might be splitting and this is very contentious guys so we know Bitcoin cash community had their hard fork increase the block size that was the direction that they wanted to take the project so check out that article on Coindex but obviously head over to the RBTC reddit this is where a lot of the um, crypto community um, that want to discuss Bitcoin Cash and um, in theory, less censorship that happens on the Bitcoin subreddit. Again, that's getting into the politics of it all, which I want to try to avoid. But there's three camps here. So Craig Wright, you, all I can say, guys, is some of the stuff he's coming out and saying is just un-Australian. You know, he's got an ego... Um, I don't like the way he's dividing the community, whether it's Bitcoin or now dividing Bitcoin Cash community. You know, their argument is that they want to continue to increase the block size. I think their next goal is 128 megabytes. Uh, and then we have, you know, Roger Ver, Jihan Wu. We've got others in the community that want to tinker with opcodes to allow for more computation. You know, second layer smart contracts and all all that sort of thing. And then this week we had a third party, the, um, the owner of Bitcoin.org, who goes by the username of Cobra, come out and say, well, geez, both these communities want to hard fork in a way that's incompatible with the others, which would result in two Bitcoin caches. So he's proposing a soft fork, which is keeping Bitcoin cash the same as the code is currently. Now, whether or not this is serious or he's just putting it out there to test the waters and see what the community says, the fact that we've got um, this divide, it isn't great. And, you know, Vitalik certainly calls out uh, Craig Wright. Um, he's made it pretty clear he doesn't think he's Satoshi. Look, I don't think he's Satoshi, guys. He might have been part of a larger team that worked on Bitcoin in the early days, but I certainly don't think he is Satoshi Nakamoto. This is going to be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Um, Again, I just don't think any of this name calling uh, and, and shit slinging between these crypto communities is healthy at all, guys. So, look, I wish that community all the best. I do hope that they can work it out. The free market will decide um, which coins are best. And this is going to be one that doesn't go away anytime soon. So, keep your eyes on the news there. Stock markets are having their longest bull run in history. So last week I pointed out that it was only a few days to go to that surpassed the longest bull run history and it's now 3,453 days with markets going up. So that's just another uh, indicator that we might be getting long in the tooth, record valuations, you know, everyone's euphoric. And this article here is basically saying, you know, longest ever bull run and why conditions have changed compared to last time. You know, that old saying of it's different this time is very dangerous. So whether or not markets have got a short a short way to go, a long way to go, I'm not sure. But the longer this runs, you know, the longer the chances of a big pullback, now that central banks aren't supporting prices and, and printing money and trying to unwind what they've done, raise interest rates, guys, it's a very interesting recipe. And we're going to have to watch how this plays out. We're going to talk about... Um, 
your super as well. We're getting a lot of questions from people in Australia. How do I put a bit of my super in um, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency and get out of the stock market? So we're going to have uh, a self-managed super fund expert on the channel this week. This is the big news though, got, uh, though guys, this week. So SEC rejects all nine of those Bitcoin ETF proposals in one hit. And I actually think this is the best possible result. So crypto communities are emotional, um, they're, they're immature. I pointed out that I thought if this went on every fortnight with just um, rejections, delays, it was going to cause a lot of bad sentiment. You guys know that I think sentiment is what moves markets. And if the sentiment remained bearish, the mainstream, the whales, they could really push markets around and, and push them lower. So the fact that we got this uh, rejected outcome, not for one, but for all nine, apart from the Van Eck um, Solid X ETF, which is still on the table for September 30, and that's the main one. And that that's different to these ones that got rejected. So we actually got a bit of a sharp reaction lower, but very short term. And as I said, I think a lot of this is already priced in with the record amount of shorts that we were seeing. So fantastic that we didn't have a huge sell-off. The main ETF everyone's got their hopes on is less subjected to the fraudulent um, concerns of the SEC because it is priced off OTC trading rather than the, the markets and the exchanges. So it does have a better chance to be approved, but whether or not that's highly likely remains to be seen. But then we came out uh, the next day and saw the SEC commissioners to vote on these ETF decisions saying, look, it's all a bit uh, rash to just reject these. And um, you know who knows? I don't necessarily think this is likely to get overturned but it's definitely showing that there's some disagreement behind the scenes that we say we're all about innovation, we want these products. It's not hard for people to invest in Bitcoin you know, with an app or with those ETNs, those exchange traded notes on the stock market already. There's Gemini investment products. So it's already there. It's, it's not hard to do. So why are we making it even harder for the average guy that wants to do this safely in a Bitcoin ETF? We just keep rejecting them all. So Watch this conversation, but don't forget, guys, it's that backed exchange that's coming online hopefully in November that's fully backed. They came out and said this week there's going to be no leverage, one-to-one -one backed Bitcoin. That's exactly what we want compared to some of these others which are based off futures contracts and tracking the price and trading on leverage, and we don't want to end up like the gold and silver markets. So have a look at this tweet here, guys. As of yesterday... The total open interest on silver, so the number of people that are trading silver futures contracts hit a new all-time high, 244,000 contracts. So each contract represents 5,000 digital ounces of silver. So that's over 1.2 billion ounces of silver. And the total mine production in the entire world in one year is 880 million. So Comex and those people that sit in their ivory towers at their keyboards with their shirt and ties, guys, and this makes me so angry, they're trading over 100% of global silver supply. When did this happen? You know, When did we let people in suits at keyboards determine the price of real goods produced by real people? And I would hate to see Bitcoin go down that path, guys. So we want products that are backed one-to-one -one that people have to buy that Bitcoin. We don't want billions of dollars coming into this uh, space if it's not even going into real Bitcoin or it's not pushing the price up, guys. Um, so again, vote with your dollars, buy real Bitcoin. The other big news this week was China coming out and even further clamping down. So trying to block um, crypto transactions on WeChat and Alipay and trying to block 124 websites that give people access to crypto. So blocking those ISPs through the Great Firewall of China. And it's funny that this article comes up. So when we're in Sydney, we went out for a breakfast. Um, we traded Cobb and a few other guys. And they'd recently been to China. They're walking around and they speak Chinese. And um, the Australians, sorry, can speak Chinese. So they're overhearing these conversations of people that maybe think that they're English speaking and can't understand them. And what they're saying is, you know, there's just deals going on left, right, and center, moving money in and out of the country into Korea to get into crypto instead of through China. Everyone knows how to do it. It's still happening. And this is all a bit of a facade, I think, guys, that China's banning crypto. It's, you know, all these negative articles, more FUD. 
anyone that's young and switched on and knows how to use a VPN or has friends, you know, it's still easy to get your hands on crypto and it's only going to become easier as we get these um, decentralized exchanges peer-to-peer trading. With those record number of shorts, guys, I just want to take the time to highlight how messy this can get. So this is this represents billions of dollars getting wrecked here. So shorts getting liquidated. I warned of this last week. We spoke about this a lot in my premium group about how this can play out. And um, it, it, we didn't necessarily predict it would exactly happen in terms of BitMEX having that scheduled maintenance and then the whales coming in and bullying prices up so that people got liquidated when it came back online. I'm really sorry for anyone that was affected by that, guys. But it's just, again, it's that lesson of don't be trading more than you can afford to lose. You know, this is so risky, these exchanges that let you trade on 100x leverage. And this tweet by Crypto Yoda summarizes it as well, guys. This is the greatest bull market in history. We all believe it's going to go much, much higher long term. We're at a 70% correction now. Do you really want to be short? at the time where this could just take off at, at any point. So yes, I know we've got experienced traders that watch this channel that are making money shorting. That's great, guys. If you if you know what you're doing and you're experienced, that's fine and you're using tight stops. But I just hear so many stories of people getting burnt, that trading on huge leverage that just shouldn't be, guys. And you don't want to end up getting wrecked, in this case, losing billions of dollars because you're shorting um, one of the greatest bull markets in history at the wrong time, guys. So just take care. Um, well done to the guys in our group this week that discussed all this um, and then it happened to play out with those shorts getting burnt um, as BitMEX went offline. So let's jump in and have a look at the markets. So this time last week, Bitcoin was trading at 63.70. We were talking about whether or not we can get a continued push up here for another right hand translation after we bottomed here perfectly on the 14th of August. And as I said, if you had have told anyone that all these ETFs would be rejected out of the blue, I think you would have said the week's going to end lower. Yet here we are, guys, up 3% on the week. So this date here, we've got as the 31st of August. Let's see how deep we pull back here. If we continue high for a few days and before we catch our breath for this next leg up as we head into September. But I really feel that ripping that Band-Aid off and getting it all out of the way is the best thing possible uh, for the community. Other than that, guys, so far, pretty light volume on the sell. Uh, we're cautious of these moving averages. I think we can still make a, a, um, a high approach here towards 7,200 because we're just in this tightening weekly uh, equilibrium pattern. Sorry, I'll take that off the log chart now. So we've had a strong bounce. I've got this level on the chart, guys, at around 5,900. Quadruple bottoms aren't common. And look, we've just defended it, defended it twice here, again here, guys. So there's one theory floating around that the backed exchange, all the powers that be that are building these infrastructure behind the scenes, some of them for well over a year now, if they want the public to come into this space, and I've been saying the race is on to collect your fees, encouraging the public and convincing them to get into an asset class that's down 90%, you know, people aren't necessarily going to put their retirement money or you know, speculate in that. Whereas if we can keep this line here defending that 70% mark, you know, maybe a bit under, but that is very different. Um, I know it sounds like a lot still, 70% versus 90%, but I think that to some extent, this level is being defended by whales. We've seen a couple of invisible buy walls pop up on exchanges. So I'm going to keep an eye on that level as well. We haven't really had a weekly close below there. A lot of people are calling for 5,000 or even flushes to 4,000, 3,000, guys. They're the same people that have been calling that for a while now. But bottoms formed when people aren't expecting it. And this week, we've seen a few OGs, a few big YouTube channels and um, Twitter personalities sort of throwing in the towel a bit and saying, oh, look, I don't think Bitcoin's going to go up anytime soon. It could be years away, a bull market. And... One thing that Bitcoin has taught me being in this space for six years is Bitcoin always surprises people. You can't compare it to shares or anything else, guys. A fixed digital asset that that's scarce, I really think that it only takes one political event. We've already seen you know, Turkey and, and Venezuela, all that sort of thing 
only needs to go to one more country, Spain, Italy, you know, they're all in debt. Fiat money's been printed in every country. Okay, this can all become headlines very quickly and start a monster rally. So just be aware of that, guys. Never write off Bitcoin. It you just you can't compare it to other assets. So that's all I want to touch on there. Um, in terms of that daily chart, guys, let's see if we can continue to form higher lows. But uh, these moving averages are probably going to act as resistance for the time being. But I really like the fact that we got all those ETF rejections out of the way. Ethereum, we spoke about this a little bit, trading at 295. It's had a down week, which is disappointing to see. But Ethereum's been a bit of a uh, front runner for altcoins over the years. So let's check out the, the F Bitcoin pair. Now, often this can mark the, the start of alt season. So this is last year, right in December, when Bitcoin ran to 20,000. And then Ethereum has just kickstarted this alt rally here. So a 500%, a lot of altcoins you know, even outperformed that. But we're right down at this level here. A lot of trading took place here, and it's only been lower than this um, you know, 0 0.04, 0 0.03 region for a number of days. So we're getting to that point where investors are sort of saying, you know, are ah, altcoins nearing their bottom? And um, just keep an eye on this pair for clues whether or not altcoins are going to kick off, and sometimes Ethereum does lead the way there. I don't want to touch on Lycon too much this week, guys. I did do that video talking about privacy and how a lot of people aren't aware that Bitcoin and Ethereum are implementing privacy features in, in the coming months or years. And Ethereum, uh, Litecoin is going to play a part in that story as a test bed, just like we saw with Segwit, just like we've seen in the past. A lot of people writing off Litecoin and thinking it's dead. Litecoin is always going to play a part. I think it's, it has positives and negatives that um, Charlie Lee is the face of the coin. But don't write this one off, guys. It's been around the longest, okay? It is the longest coin without a hard fork now. It's got a huge community. They've you know, just bought a, sh a stake in a bank. Litecoin want to be a mover and a shaker. They're not just going to sit idly by and do nothing. There's a lot of people that have been in Litecoin for a number of years that have got a lot of, a lot of money, a lot of influence, and they want to help, help this coin succeed and help Bitcoin succeed and be that test bed, work together the silver to Bitcoin's gold, um, as I've done videos on in the past. Other coins I just wanted to mention quickly, as we said at the start, Walton Chain's been a another strong performer lately. Uh, go down the list here. I just wanted to show you Nano. So most of you know this one as a rebrand of Rayblox. A big performer. Look, let's talk about our currency is going to perform well, our platform is going to perform well. This one, just like a lot of coins, has to develop good wallets, good partnerships, good developers. So it has a lot of features that we like, you know, instant transactions, fee-less transactions. I'll cover it in a video in the future, guys. But... It's happened before. I remember, you know, vert coins in favor and then, you know, another coins in favor. So, guys, this one's had a huge run. Um, keep an eye on it, but certainly just be cautious when things are up 300%. Don't FOMO in at the top. But well done to anyone that, that's been accumulating. And I think Nano is one uh, to watch that's got a big community and, and a lot of good support out there as well. Lisk, Walton Chain, V Chain. Um, as I mentioned, they're the big performers, guys. But what I want to talk about just to finish off here is why are we get into crypto at all. So this chart here, the wealthy Americans, um, you know, more comfortable than ever versus those earning under 50K here. So you've heard that saying, the rich are getting richer, the, the poor are getting poorer. Well, not necessarily. Standard of living is increasing for everyone, but that divide and money printing, it's all caused by the financial system. So never forget that Bitcoin represents that new system. More and more people are waking up from this narrative of, you know, who controls every aspect of your life, and it is the hands of a few. With the conversations we have on our travels with people in the crypto space, it never ceases to amaze me, these people that are so woke to everything happening around them. Um, we're probably going to talk about that more on the channel, you know, what's happening with Facebook and our, and our data. It's never been more important than ever, and it's all part of this revolution, guys, this movement that I see coming. It's why I've got this tweet pinned at the top here. There's going to be, you know, chop and change, but 
At the end of the day, over time, fiat money is printed. It loses its purchasing power. Every country in the world is doing this. They've done this more than ever since the GFC. We see it in Venezuela, Turkey, but it's a theme that's going to continue to play out. And over time, Bitcoin price in US dollars should continue to go up if central banks continue to do what they do. We've had a lot of um, political headlines in Australia this week, but just remember, politicians aren't determining your future. Two bipartisan um, parties around the world, I should say, guys, they don't change anything. We see it particularly in Australia. You know, nothing gets done. These people are on high wages. Most of them haven't run businesses. Okay, they they're not street smart. Never has there been a better time in history to be an entrepreneur, you know, start a YouTube channel, start a business on the side. It's a great time to be alive. You can build your own future. Stop worrying about what these politicians are doing, guys. They're dragging us backwards. You know, it's the smart innovators in every country, the young minds um, that are moving us forward. And they're the ones that are going to this blockchain space, this crypto space, the big believers. So we'll finish on that note, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that video. Please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share these videos around. And as always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Cheers.